recording will start soon. Okay, we are recording. All right, so um, for those of you who don't know, this is Charles Benyon. Not Charles Benyon, sorry, Charles Marbles. Marbes? Marbles? Marbes? Marbs. Marbs, you're Marbs. close. Marbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Charles is um, one of our more successful online coaches who, at, you, at one point you were brick and mortar, right? And you, you guys made yeah, the complete shift. For eight. Eight years, yeah. Right. And um, you seem to have such a good process, a really good flo following um, on, on social media, which I think is a, a big key to your yeah. success. And I'd love to just, you know, learn about how you built that up. And also, you know, what your numbers are like, like what what is your process? What do you do? Um, sure. Uh, whether it's nurturing, um, with creating your Facebook group, all that kind of stuff, and how you've made the transition. Uh, transition. But first, I think, just tell us a bit about yourself, Charles, how you how you got started and, and your journey. Yeah, so, um, boy, usually this turns into a long story. Uh, but That's I'll, all good. I'll We're here for it, man. <laughs> we got time. I'll, try to, I'll try to keep it semi-short. Uh, so uh, I, I'd struggled a lot with weight when I was, was I'm younger, in my younger years, um, especially as a youth. Um, through adolescence so overweight child um, kind of went through that entire process of you know the name calling and uh, just really struggled um, self-esteem self-worth that kind of thing um, so, you know dealt with uh, my mother dealt with weight issues my sister dealt with weight issues my brother dealt with weight issues um, so from about the age of 12 um, through my er early college years it was it was always a, a, an issue for me um, so as far as like understanding struggles and, and pain, um, you know, kind of that kind of thing, like I have a lot of reps in that. Um, and so it got to be a point where I was 20 years old and my brother had come home for Christmas and he had lost 50 pounds. And my brother was about 100 pounds overweight at the time. And I said, holy cow, what did you do? Like, what, what was this process? What did you do? And he said, well, I read this book and I started doing this plan and nobody knew he was doing it. The plan that he was a part of was um, Bill Phillips' Body for Life, and I had never heard of it, and I didn't know anything about it. And I started flipping through the book, and the first page is all these pictures of people transforming themselves in these amazing before and after pictures, and I'm like, this is crazy awesome. So I read the book cover to cover. Literally the next day, I went back to my roommate and said, hey, everything in our cupboards, um, you know, the potato chips, the pizzas, um, you know, all of that stuff. You can have all that if you want. If not, I'm throwing it in the garbage and starting this plan tomorrow. And I just began this journey of self-discovery, 100% self-taught, because prior to this, um, you would not find me in the weight room. Um, I was really big into music. Uh, I was going to actually go to college. My first two years in college, I was a music education major. Uh, so I was very much into music and the fine arts. Um, I had been to the YMCA and lifted weights before, and I absolutely despised it. I hated it. I didn't, I didn't like being weak. You wouldn't find me anywhere near that. Um, you know, I was the kind of kid that was like, I want to get in shape and I'm going to go run a mile and I'd run a block and I'd be exhausted and I would quit and I would just go eat Oreos. Um, so, <laughs> so I went down this, this journey of self-discovery and uh, I ran the, it's a 90 day program. I ran the program twice through. And then in the course of six months, I had lost 55 pounds, um, got myself to the lowest body weight and uh, body fat that I had ever really been in my, my, you know, at that point in my life, uh, 20 years old. And then I just kind of caught the bug and I just kind of went down this path of self-discovery and um, this journey of going from fat loss to eventually um, switching majors. I ended up graduating with a degree in communications, funny enough, still not fitness. Um, when I graduated, I ended up deciding that I wanted to kind of do something in the fitness industry because it had such had such a positive impact on my life. And um, that was where I inquired about getting a personal trainer certification. I got a job at the front desk at the local gym, went from working kind of nights and weekends to then getting certified, becoming a, uh, a PT. And then that kind of began my journey into the fitness industry. And that was in 2004. So I didn't end up being a music teacher. I didn't exactly use my degree in my bachelor's degree in communications, although now I communicate communicate quite often. So um, that's right. an interesting piece of the puzzle. But that's kind of how it all started. That was in 2004. I got my personal trainer's uh, license, got involved in powerlifting, then got involved in bodybuilding. And then um, I branched out in 2008 away from the facility that I was currently at, went in to do independent contracting. Four years after that, I decided to get out of personal training and build boot camps um, from where I was living at the time. That was unheard of. No, there was no such thing as boot camps. Nobody was doing it. I was the original kind of boot camp gym, if you will, 
um, where I lived at the time in 2012, spent about eight years doing that, built up a business there with a team of roughly eight coaches, just at one location, um, you know, built it up to a very respectable level as far as, you know, as far as what I was concerned, you know, I, I really thought we did really well there. COVID hit, kind of changed the game. We thought we, we'd be out of commission for two to three weeks, ended up being kind of two to three months, which ended up being not just two to three months. After two to three months, we decided um, with the transition and pivot there, um, laying off all of our employees at the time and then saying, you know what, we're just, there was a lot of things in play in the background, um, but we're not going back. So we 100% went all in on the online game, had never done anything online before had no experience with the online game, online coaching, nothing. Uh, we built it from scratch, completely did it just out of kind of what we knew. And um, and that was in May of 2020, you know, a few months after kind of COVID was in full swing. Um, so we shut the doors down. We never went back, have never, have never spent another day inside of a facility since then. Completely transitioned to online in-home training, um, private coaching, kind of the, the one-on-one. We have a few select clients, but then our, our bread and butter we do right now is I like to call it kind of online group coaching, kind of a one a one-to-many model um, and where a lot of coaches in the beginning were getting the advice to utilize Zoom and do a lot of face-to-face coach movement patterns and whatnot, like which is really cool. Um, we decided to utilize Facebook and Facebook groups and Facebook content where, you know, we are we are putting out the product in front of customers. They can interact with us, you know, through through conversations and comments, but we don't actually necessarily see them on the other side. Um, but it's absolutely blown our minds in regards to what we've been able to do, the relationships we've been able to build and the, and the type of clientele that um, we've been able to help over the course of the last two years. And, and I and I firmly believe this when I say this, I feel like we're just scratching the surface. Yeah, so, man, I, I 100% agree. So what, obviously there's a huge benefit to to being strictly online, right? For, mm-hmm. Especially for you guys to not go back to brick and mortar. So what is it solely about strictly doing online um, training, workouts, programming that has sort of kept you away from going back to brick and mortar? Uh, you know, I think it's a few things. I think it depends upon, um, you know, I mean, really, I guess if I had to nail it down to just a single word for, for us, for me and my wife, it's freedom. Uh, you know, we, li- we lived in Wisconsin for our entire lives. We just most recently moved to Florida. We never would have been able to do that had we been tied down with a brick and mortar, at least in our opinion. Um, it's given us the freedom to, to really uh, uh, not only just move ourselves physically, but the freedom to... Um, Kind of set things on our own terms it's just it's just me and my wife right now now that doesn't mean down the road that we may not have other people on our team and on our staff um well, we do have a yoga instructor which is super cool um, oh, nice. but you know we used to have a team of coaches and a staff i mean there was there was a lot of moving parts that kept us grounded some people love that you know we some people absolutely love that process um i i do i do from certain days miss the the interaction um you know dealing with people face to face and that you know Instead of you and me doing this via a camera, we're sitting face to face and you know actually working on things with people in that environment, um, building relationships. But it's it's interesting because I, I thought that'd be a limiting factor, and it's really not because people are people, right? I mean, people are people. Like whether you're communicating through this, you're communicating through a platform like Facebook or Messenger or email, um, or having just text conversations. There's still people on the other side of it, so you don't really ever lose that human element. Um, but it really is kind of just the freedom to kind of pick and choose a little bit more than where we were prior in regards to the brick and mortar and the staff and just the rigid environment of that facility. Um, I did it for eight years. I wanted to try something different. I just, I, it felt a little bit too rigid and restrictive. Um, now there are some, there are some, you have a lot more reach, but it also demands a lot more attention um, because there's a lot more people, you know, like the online market, well, both markets can get saturated. Let's be honest. Oh, um, for for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's very true. Like when we left, when we left where we came from back in Green Bay, I mean, there was there was literally like fifteen group fitness facilities in you know a couple square miles. So that's saturated as well. Um, but I guess you know again to not run around in circles. I think it's just given us the ability to have more freedom, um, to just kind of do what we want to do and set it up how we want it, and people have been very receptive to it. Right. And what do you, what is like some of the challenges that you've, you've hit along the way? Obviously there's still going to be more, but 
things you weren't expecting um, that you've had to to make adjustments to, and that that you know your typical hurdles and stuff that transitioning yeah. from that, um, that brick and mortar to the online stuff. Yeah, I think, I mean, technology is obviously a big component. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's a it we're figuring it out as we go, but as yep. we dive deeper into it, um, and and as we expand our business and and grow our numbers. I think it's making sure that you have people that are, are that have specific expert expertises, expertise in particular areas such as yourself, you know, to to have conversations with to help, you know, guide and and um, you give 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 good advice and allow you to kind of take advantages of you know. So so building building teams is is still important. It's still very important. Um, but yeah, like tech obviously is something that. You know, you have to better understand and unless you're you know, completely willing to outsource some of that stuff. But even still inside of our studio, I mean, these are hands on things that we have to learn and we have to understand and we have to become efficient with. So building those understanding that technology and building systems around it, I think is super important. I think. And one thing I learned from the brick and mortar is if you don't have systems, you're going to struggle. Uh, so I don't I don't care if, it, if you are brick and mortar or if you are online, if you don't have a duplicated duplicatable system. You're you're definitely going to struggle. Um, you know you're going to be beating your head into a, into a brick wall, wondering why it's so tough. And 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 again, if you're going to delegate some of those things, you have to be able to have some kind of workflow to hand to somebody. Like literally tomorrow, okay, if somebody's going to walk in here, how do they do this job that you're trying to to teach and coach them? Is there a, you know is there a standard operating procedure for it? So that's right. probably been a struggle. Um, I, I would say that you know making sure like making an imprint into the marketplace. You know that being, um, uh, I don't want to say being unforgettable, right. Being unique, um, your unique selling proposition is being unique in general, right? Like how you have to be willing to really put yourself out there. Right. Uh, I think that the product I'm not, I'm not foolish in thinking that the, the product is myself and my wife. Right. I mean, fitness is fitness and nutrition is nutrition. So, who we are, how we show up into the marketplace, the message that we we believe in and that we share. Um, I think that if people people recognize BS real fast, they they recognize if you're if you're not authentic, if you're just reading off of a script, if you're saying the same thing everybody else is saying, if you're offering the same challenges and trials and all this stuff. I mean, they've seen it all before, and people are jaded and they're skeptical. So I think an obstacle that you have to be willing to overcome if you're going to get into the online game is you have to be willing to share a message that you absolutely 100% believe in. Like if you aren't doing the things that you are preaching to your people, you will fail. Right. That would be, that'd be my biggest step. Like if you aren't living the life that you are preaching and teaching, it's never going to work. And, and do and you just, typically, sorry, uh, do you typically share your story? Like the story you shared with me on your fitness journey, is that something that you mm -hmm. pace into when, you, when you're talking to new potential clients or prospects? Yeah, I'm as as often as I can. I try to be as relevant as I can. So one of the things that we decided to do back in March of 2020, or is either March or April of 2020 when COVID first kicked in, is we started doing something called coffee talk. And so okay. Monday through Friday, my wife and I, in some form or fashion, whether it was her or me or us together, would get on our Facebook fan page and we would go live for 15 minutes Monday through Friday. We just put and out is episode. Is that like a, a Q and A kind of thing or? Well, it's it. We pick a topic and we discuss the topic, and then we we offer conversation through the course of the 15, 20, or thirty minutes we have, you know, to invite them to comment, to share, to ask questions. But a lot of it is picking a topic, or you know, when you talk about sharing your journey in those coffee talks, something somewhere along the way, we are going to share something about our past and be very real and honest about it, to be relatable and to to let them understand that you know we're still human too. Uh, we just produced episode 506. Um, oh, so, so being so being consistent, being authentic, having something to say um, versus just posting a motivational quote tile on your Facebook page. There's a difference. Oh, yes. For you sure. Know, I think I think, too, like even even nowadays, like in the online world with Instagram, everything seems to be super flashy because that's what it's all about. It's about capturing attention. And I get that. But sometimes I feel like a lot of the things in our industry that are capturing attention are just gimmicks, you know? So like, so what, what are you, what are you putting out there? What, what valuable content are you actually providing to the marketplace where people can 
understand, know, like, and trust, right. right? And they can gain some value out of it. So, and so I, I, that kind of makes me want to segue into what I talked about earlier. Being, I believe, being a huge piece of your puzzle is is your social media following. How how did you guys build that? Was that something you had when you were in the brick and mortar, or was this something you built as soon as um, you went online with with? No, no I would tell you. So I think one of the reasons why we were so successful, and this isn't this isn't uh, you know to downplay anybody's you know, hopes or dreams of potentially having a hybrid model. Like if you're, if you are brick and mortar and you're considering going into hybrid or you're like, Hey, I want to maybe be in a, I'm in a similar position where I'm going to close the doors and I'm going to go online. Or this is somebody who's just gener venturing out for the first time online. Um, this was something that was instilled in me a long time ago. So the actual date that we launched our better body fitness fan page, I don't e I don't even know. I could tell you that. I don't even know. I think it was 2012. Okay. I think it was, I think it was the year that we went out um, the year that, uh, that I decided to open up the, the boot camp in green Bay. So we're talking, I mean, I had the following, right. But there were, but funny that it would come and go in ebbs and flows in regards to you're going to get out of it, what you put into it. Right. And so there was, there was a lot of time not spent building that. Um, but the last few years of the brick and mortar facility, we did start making a much bigger push to leverage that leverage the power of live video paid advertisement. I mean, cause I think we all know that Facebook fan pages, they're pretty much ghost towns unless you're willing to put some, some money where your mouth is right. If you're, unless you're willing to, to get some reach through a live video or you're willing to use that and leverage that page for pet paid advertising, you know, the organic reach isn't what it used to be, but nonetheless, if somebody were to go, I'd tell them to go to our fan page faster than to go to our website, because if they go to our fan page and they just start scrolling down, you're going to get to know exactly who we are super fast, who we are, what we believe in, what we do, the type of client that we work with. You're going to get a really good idea really, really fast. Um, but then it just goes back to, there's no better time than now. I would tell anybody you know, whether it's starting a fan page or if you want to go the Instagram, the whole point of, I think, social media is understanding where the people are that you want to contact. Where do they hang out? Right. Like that's right. the whole thing. If, if they're on Facebook, go on Facebook. If they're on Instagram, go to Instagram. Don't just do it to be cool. <laughs> do it with a purpose. <laughs> um, but be but be super, super, super consistent with it. And that I think for us was a huge deal. So when we went online, people already kind of knew who we were. And another thing that um, kind of side note, my wife put some time and effort into is when COVID hit, she reached out to all four of the local major media channels in, in Green Bay when we, where we were living and essentially kind of sent them out like a little PR um, thing and was just like, hey, you know, here's what, who's, here's what we are, here's what we're doing. Um, you know, do you guys have anything that, you know, maybe we could help out in regards to like a little health segment or just kind of just was like, Hey, you know, here's who we are. Here's what we're doing. If there's any way that we could contribute and add value to anything you guys got going on, let us know. And, uh, there was one station and they replied back within two days and they said, uh, we, we went online. We saw what you guys were doing. We saw your new setup. We absolutely love it. We'd like to invite you guys to come in and do a weekly segment. And so we started doing that for a year and a half. We would submit uh, like a weekly five minute segment. It got aired on the local news. Um, you know, the direct ROI from that, I don't know, but it was just another avenue to gain exposure and to just kind of spread the word. And I think that made a, that again, people that said, hey, I signed up because I saw you here on this TV show. There wasn't a ton of that ROI, but I think it also was just great to kind of put us out in another venue, get in front of people to be seen and kind of spread the message. So being willing to take action on those things when they might scare the living daylights out of you is another thing, you know, having the courage to just to put something out there, you just never know what's going to happen. So, right. And yeah, I mean, I think most people think, oh, no news network's going to get back to me about putting our, our product out there. And you guys were like, well, what do you get to lose? Like, <laughs> just and the timing, especially with COVID and stuff, I, I mean, you know, yeah. that, that's perfect. But I mean, when you say consistency, what are we talking about? Like daily content? Um, what does that look like for you? Yeah, you know, a mentor of mine said to me a long time ago, like, he's really big into email marketing. He still is today. He's not, he's not one of my mentors now, but there was one of my past mentors. And he just said, 
his big push for all of us was to email every day. And if not every day, Monday through Friday. And he said, do you remember back when newspapers existed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he said, you know, and they would have the classifieds, right? And he said, so do you think you have a better opportunity to sell something if you put something in the classifieds one time a week, two times a week, five times a week, or seven days a week? Because he said, not everybody's going to open the classifieds. Not everybody's going to get that newspaper. So that has never left me. And so that's where like we, when I send my email, um, I email to two lists. I email to like our general list and then I have a private email that goes out to our membership base. I email them Monday through Friday. I've done that for years. And so they get five emails from me every single week. I take the weekends off. I try to provide really valuable content, right? But as far as on the social media aspect of things, um, it, we, it's, it's been ebbs and flows. But as far as if you went onto our page right now, you know, it's at, at least a post a day. And again, some of that stuff will boost and put some paid advertising, you know, sharing it into our stories, um, try to get a little bit more organic reach. But, um, you know, I'm on a mission most recently to go to go live on my fan page Monday through Friday for at least 10 minutes. Um, we've done the coffee talks, you know, for, for a long time that way. So just getting something of relevancy out in front of people as often as possible. Um, and then like every single Saturday for the last two plus years, unless we're traveling, we have produced a free 60 minute workout that is live. So you could, you could go back on our fan page and you could literally pull probably a hundred, a hundred plus 60 minute sessions off of, and you could like, and never pay us a dime and get a hundred right. free one hour workouts. We've done that almost every single Saturday for two years. And so what is the, the what's the move from there then so obviously you're putting out free content like you said someone could literally just work out by watching your videos and that's a, a lot of the speed humps that people that are transitioning to online kind of bump into because it's like why would i pay for this if i can just go on youtube and watch workouts for free right do you how do you address that what and like what is so i guess we'll kind of get into um when it comes to ads right because you guys do tend to offer some free stuff um Mm -hmm. you sometimes you do like lead magnets with alicia stuff at fit pro essentials um but you kind of have your own challenges with your own spins and stuff on it you i know like your demographic is definitely mums that's kind of your core demographic right and we can get into a little bit of that how you develop that too but what with these challenges when you have people sign up what does it look like Plugging them because I know a big part of it's putting them into your private Facebook group, um, which mm-hmm. is great. You know, it creates that little exclusive club. How do you go from there to a conversion where you guys are making money at the end of the day? Because that's what everyone wants to do it for, right? So what how, what does that look like? Yeah, um, I mean, whenever we're putting out free content, that that I have two kind of goals there. Number one is just to build my list because I know that I'm consistent in reaching my list, you know, five times out of a week. Otherwise, like we just ran a five day, um, a little Friday, five day freebie challenge. And then the goal there was to get them indoctrinated into our culture, who we are, what we do, give them the appetizer. Um, and then towards the end of the little five day, we extended it, you know, to a seven, like, Hey guys, we're going to get two extra days. And then, and then really pushing an offer from there from a freebie into a paid trial. And, and that kind of varies. Uh, we've done 21 days for $21 has been our most successful um, program that we've offered. We used to do 28 days, but um, the 21 upfront converts a lot more, um, gets more, more people. And then from there, we've also done 42 days for like 97. Those have been our two most common. Um, but then building them into um, monthly subscription, the, so the conversion on the back end for the most part is a monthly subscription. Um, so it's obviously a little bit more of an investment on the back end, but through the course of 21 days, um, it, it like the whole goal for us is to give them something that, that we truly believe they cannot get anywhere else. Um, and so again, we're contacting them every single day. We have a seven day and a 14 day follow up that we do with them. And again, we're doing, we're, we're trying to over deliver at like a 10 X level. Um, you know, so they hear from us, they, they get a message from us every single day. We have live workouts every single day. We have little fitness challenges that they can do every single day. We do a 30 minute coffee talk that's private to them only that they can only get inside the group, um, Monday through Friday. So we're working on that. We have accountability posts that go in at the end of the night. At day seven, day 14, we're doing a follow-up with them. We ask them five questions. They put it in a woofoo form. You know, they comes back. We have a little follow-up conversation. So there's a lot of work there. 
Um, but being incredibly personable, even though it's virtual, and we have heard time and time and time and time and time again, that they will say, I can't believe you guys do all this. I can't believe that I've gotten more out of this program than I ever have going to a gym and being in front of somebody. So I think that, you know, the somebody told me a long time ago, the fortune's in the follow-up, right? And again, and I, content's content, but I also think, is the content useful? Is it what they're looking for? Are you asking people what they want? One of the questions is, you know, is there anything else we can do for you? How can we improve upon your experience? What would you like to see more of? Uh, that kind of stuff. So when we're doing our little fitness challenges, we try to make sure we're doing them based off of what they want to see, what they want to, what they want to do, that kind of stuff. So, you know, really is over deliver. And then the final week of the challenge. So they've gone through 14 days and then the final week of the challenge, it's systematic and an automated process in regards to, you know, here's the offer. We send them the information for the landing page. They can go through and read it and it just strategically touch points. You know, they're seven days out, they're five days out, they're three days out, two, one, um, try to make it as automated as possible. But on the flip side of that conversation too, if somebody's gone a little bit silent, I'm going to reach out to them. You know, hey, Susie Q, Johnny Doe, how's it going? You know, anything I can do to help you? Um, so we've been we've been pretty successful with that as far as our overall conversions. Um, sometimes maybe not as good as others, but I think overall, I think that process has really benefited us for sustainable growth. And what is the typical conversion and retention after these these free challenges? How many people end up staying on with you guys and 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 pay for the for the subscription? Yeah, so our conversion rate, as far as percentages is concerned, um, is mm -hmm. usually around sixty percent. So six out of ten wow. people. So like six out of ten people that enter in a twenty-one day challenge um, will typically convert over to long-term membership. Well, and I don't, I don't even like to use the term membership because it's it's subscription-based. We just tell them, you know, it's monthly subscription. You can cancel anytime. We don't lock people. I'm not, I'm just not into the whole locking them up into long-term. Some people are, and if that's their jam, that's awesome. Right. Oh, I mean, nearly everything's a subscription-based service now, right? So, yeah. I mean, make, makes total sense. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty bloody good, man, 60%. And how, what, what's your attrition? Like how, how long are they typically staying on for? Um, the lifetime for a member, um, you know, the actual statistic, that's probably something that I need to get a little bit better. So I don't have that number directly in front of me, but um, it's very, very rare if somebody comes into our culture and leaves prior to six months, like very, very, very rare. I mean, it's right. going to be somewhere somewhere between the nine and fifteenth, but nine and fifteen month mark. Um, you know, so that's, that's the great. average, you know, lifetime value of a client definitely something that we have to get a little bit more dialed in. Um, but there's, it's very, very rare that somebody comes in and two months later they're like, "Oh, that was great. See you later." <laughs> and so it's not the, like that. No, right. So, and I'd imagine like with the you said you build the culture, which is like huge piece to it right is building that culture so these people that are signing up are they kind of like becoming friends with each other too and like you know creating relationships with each other do you have yeah. like are there like separate kind of groups where okay these are the 21 day challenges from january these are the ones from july and you do you kind of separate them that way or is everyone in the group everyone that goes in goes in the same group yeah, it's a great question. So anytime we run, we have a general members platform. And then anytime we run a challenge, our members get to participate in that if they want as a VIP. And so, so if we have, there's the possibility that, you know, if there's a hundred people in the challenge group, you could say that 50 people are brand new and 50 people are, are members that just wanted to jump in and do that. And they're kind of mixed together into that challenge group. Once the challenge ends, that group is done, gone and dead. They come back into the, the people that decide to stay with us, come into our members group. Um, you know, building connection with people online has been something that we are definitely dabbling in more and more. Uh, we just had a, a call to action just this last week. You know, when we do our when we do our lives is, you know, hey, if you see a name, somebody you don't recognize, somebody you have no idea who they are, but you're, you know, you Give them a like, give them a love. That's like a high five at the gym, telling them a great job. You know, I don't know that person across the gym, but I give them a high five because they're killing it today. And then when we do our coffee talks, there's so many comments that start rolling in and people start contributing um, to that conversation. And, and we said, you know, hey, if there's somebody on coffee talk that you see contributing and you're just kind of hanging out, watching the conversation happen, 
I would highly advocate that you, you know, friend request that person, enter into a conversation with them. And again, it's going to be kind of scary because you don't know this person. You don't have no idea where they live or who they are, whatever. But if they're, if you are enjoying the energy that they give to that conversation on these coffee talk coaching calls to say, Hey, I saw you, you know, Hey John, I saw you on coffee talk, man. That comment was so awesome. Thanks for, you know, you're super inspiring. Love to chat more. So that is one thing we're working on a lot that we don't have a system with currently but getting people into smaller interconnected groups um so that they can have just a deeper sense of connection versus just part of the the gigantic mass and i think that's like um, a lot of churches are this way right like they have you have the big right. you have the big church but then they always have the call for everybody to get into small groups and and that's how you build a culture within the culture right um, so that is something definitely that we are we are we are aware of and diligently working on uh, more and more every single day. So that's, that's, that's a huge piece. Yeah, that's, yeah, definitely a huge piece. And I'd imagine too, like, there's like little pieces of commonality. Obviously they want to lose weight or get fit, whatever it is, um, even socialize. But you typically, because we're not at that stage yet where we're, we're advertising on a national scale, right? So yeah. do you think like, because from memory, I believe just even just targeting Green Bay has a better effect or it generates more leads than the whole Wisconsin, state of Wisconsin, right? So do you think that's a huge piece is the fact that they're all living around the same kind of area as well, the same city? Is there a connection would, piece there? I would I would say that for sure. Yeah, that was some, I would say that is a point of leverage for us. Um, our last ad campaign that we ran actually for the entire because we were, we're now in florida but we lived in wisconsin actually the the statistics from the state actually crushed the statistics from the city <laughs> so the state of wisconsin okay. actually worked really and we're just slowly branching out here into florida um but yeah I, I would say when you get on when you get on a broadcast there's the weather I mean, that everybody talks about the weather right so like <laughs> that that's just a big thing just things that are relatable because mm -hmm. of their geography and we play into that a little bit now that's not to say that we don't have clients that are in different areas across the united states but when we know we can play into a conversation in regards to building connection we definitely do um so i think that's i think that's helpful i'm sure there's going to be some things that we will see and experience over time as we do broaden into more of a, a nationally you know known um product and service uh, that things we just haven't seen yet so yeah you, you can definitely feel that it's a little bit more tight knit because of where we came and how we began the online journey in regards to who we specifically targeted through our advertising right which and which is a great place to start really yeah, when you're starting yeah. out right is to start out then expand because what you're essentially doing is building your brand building building the culture and then just stacking layers upon layers of connection until you can sort of breach out further and further and people want to be part of that club, the better yeah, body think, fitness club. Yeah, I, I think leveraging your community is, at least from, from my perspective, I feel like leveraging geography, even though you are online, is a point of leverage. Mm. You know, I, I think like when you talk about like that blue ocean strategy versus the red ocean, like, you know, there's some heavy hitters in the market that are just, that, that are killing the national game because they're just such a big brand. I'm right. not trying to, I'm not trying to compete with them. I'm trying to take it to a more local level, even though I am online. So if I can leverage that any way that I possibly can, I want to use that to my advantage. So even now that we live in a different area of the United States, I'm still going to get myself connected in this community and I'm going to do the best I can to be as well known as I possibly can in my immediate community and try to, and try to really leverage that as much as possible. I love it, man. That's awesome. So I, I want to kind of go back to um, the emails because you said emailing is, is a big part of your process. Mm -hmm. um, put, how do you come about cre having to create new content every day? Um, I'm, I don't know if you get some stuff from Alicia at FitPro Essentials because she's great at making creating content mm -hmm. stuff, but mm -hmm. are you doing a lot of it yourself as well? And how are you... you coming up with new stuff that keeps engagement and also what what kind of engagement are you getting with your emails like what what's the open rate the click rate and stuff like that yeah um i compose every email myself 
Um, now, what I have done in the last few months, um, I have looked to repurpose content that I have previously written. Um, so, you know, I, I've done it a lot this year that I've gone back to 2021 emails and I've looked at them from where we were exactly. So like on April 20th of 2021, I, I was looking at that email. I kind of went in, I was like, man, I love what I wrote. <laughs> so I spent, <laughs> I spent a couple of years composing all original pieces. And now this year, just to gain some leverage on myself to systemize it a little bit more, I'm like, who's going to remember that email from a year ago. And then even at that, I don't verbatim write what was in it. I just kind of take it, make a couple tweaks, make a few adjustments, dependent, add, add an offer, add a freebie, whatever. And, and I kind of adjust it and send it out. So that's what I've kind of been doing more recently, but to go back to a couple of years ago, um, you know, I was, a couple things. I, I feel like you, you need to be relatable, right? Like you gotta, you gotta get inside the mind of your prospect. You have to meet them where they're at. Right. And that's where that whole, like being real thing. So somebody told me a long time ago, like you have to know them better than they know themselves. Right. Like you have to be inside their mind and, and understand their nightmares and their daydreams. You know, you got to understand their nightmares and their fantasies. Right. So like, I try to think about it. Like I write emails from a perspective of mindset and growth. And I'm trying to nurture them through the one thing that I feel that most fitness professionals do not take a lot of time on. So do I send them in emails about carbohydrates and proteins and calories and training? And yeah, yeah. I'd say for like every, probably for every 10 emails that I write about mindset, I'll send one email out that has something to do with nutrition, specific, like specifically hyper-focused stuff or training. Um, but a lot of it has to do, a lot of it has to do with mindset. And I just go back to like, okay, what did I struggle with when I was struggling? I ask my wife all the time. She's got a hundred pound weight loss story. What did you struggle? Oh, really? With? I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, Ro got, Rox yeah. yeah, Roxanne's got a hundred pound weight loss story. Oh, awesome. So I try to combine the two. I know that the majority of the people reading that newsletter are going to be busy moms with kids. So, and I'm a male and I'm not a mom, right? And I right. have, and I have, I have three stepchildren. So I try to write from, from a helpful perspective, but understanding them. So if they're reading it, they're on the other side doing this. Yep. 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 That's yep, that's, yep. That's me. That's me. And okay. you know, I try to, I try to think one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got is like, what's their problem? What, what's the problems that they're facing and what is the pain that they're feeling? And if right. you can isolate the problems that they're facing and the pain that they're feeling, you can offer them solutions and possibilities, but we, we all, it's like, when I say we, most fitness pros just want to show and hand them the shiny object at the end of the journey. You, you got to be willing to go deep on the emotional level. You're a problem solver. These people have problems. <laughs> They're experiencing right. pain. They just want somebody to know what they're feeling and give them just a small little nugget, a small little something right. that they can grab onto and utilize. And that, that's just my, that's what I feel anyways. That, that's how I attack it. Um, right. But so they want you with them on the journey as opposed to at the end of the destination. Yeah. At the get, get in the trenches with me feels you know right. get, get dirty with me so i think there are tactical ways that you can go out there and you can you know grab headlines and and see certain things in regards to nutrition and fitness and exercise and um there are there are hacks and ways to do that but i just try to i just try to sit down and knock out like i'm going to knock out five emails i know it takes me about 20 minutes to write an email so i'm just going to block off like an hour and a half or something i'm going to knock five out and then i'm done and i just schedule them and there we go um, and then I always try to make sure that um, it's a direct response conversation. I, I always ask them something at the end of the email, go here, do this, click on this, hit reply. Okay. So right call away. to action big. No matter what, no matter what it like, like today, like these last two days, um, we gave them a vision planner and a habit tracker, you know, so I gave them that as a freemium, um, the last two days. Now today I talked about a particular topic. The PS was, Hey, let me know your thoughts, hit reply, right? Like hit reply and let me know what your biggest takeaway was today. And I don't get a ton of responses when I tell them, but at least I'm putting it in their mind to do something. Right. I'll, I'll get like seven or eight people that'll email me back and they'll be like, hey. Um, as far as open rates are concerned, um, we are we kind of like almost redid our entire list. Um, so it's it's a little bit fresh at the moment. Um, we kind of right. did some spring, some spring cleaning. Um, but I would say right now, so like, like I said, I have two different lists. I get about 65% of 65 to 70% of our members to open our daily email, but that's kind of to be expected because they're like, Hey, they want to hear from the coach. Yeah. Um, 
So uh, why do I want to say the? I wish I had the stat right in front of me. Um, I think our open rate it's over twenty percent. You know, it's it's probably okay. somewhere between between twenty and may, maybe mid twenty or so. And that's out of how many leads? On the list? Yeah. Uh, the list at the moment is pretty small. It's a, and we have around a okay. thousand right now. It's just under a thousand. Still, twenty percent of a thousand, pretty pretty bloody good. So, I imagine too that you. I mean, you do five emails in, in an hour and a half on a weekly basis. I'm sure you get better at writing the content too, right? And getting into that space you said of becoming them, understanding them. You probably get better at it the more you do it, right? It's probably now coming as second nature to you. It's like anything, dude. I mean, we're yep. in the, you're in, we're in the fitness industry, right? So exactly. It's, it's what yeah. my reps, 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 reps. reps. My, my coach <laughs> is just like, you know, it's like anything. The first time you do a squat, it's real sloppy and it looks mm -hmm. like garbage. You know what I mean? And then and you do it a thousand times and you don't even think about it. So, yeah, like I, it is, it flows a lot easier and it's really clunky at first and it's frustrating at first. Um, but no matter what you're writing, whether it's mindset, whether it's nutrition, whether it's fitness, whether it's a helpful tip or whatever, just the act in the habit of doing it and getting those reps in is definitely going to make a difference. For sure. And other with the call to actions and stuff like that that you have, does it is it a fairly complex matter? Like if they perform this, if they do this, they get this tag and then they get plugged into this nurture sequence. And like, do you have all kind of moving pieces or is it very simple, stupid? Like. Uh, what, do you, what, what are your end goals to, to these call to actions you know yeah it is it is not um i you know i've pondered the idea of getting really um extravagant with different nurture sequences um i have not done that i have not done that it's uh it's literally just click on this and get the instant value um and and i have people in the hive tagged very specifically so i know how they came in to our network so that if I do want to push out a very particular piece of content that I feel is better suited for them, then I go about it that route, right? Out of the thousand people, if there are 300 people, a third of them that came in through this funnel, then, then I might push something out to them. But I use it more as a general list. And again, this is funny. This is just something that was instilled in me back in like 2012 for my first mentor. He's just like, I email my list. Everybody gets the same email. The same, and I, and I mean, there's probably some people out there that's like, that strategy is not going to work. My thought, my thought at the moment is I just want to keep that. I want to give them value and I want to keep them engaged. And I want to make sure that they understand that at the end of every single email, there's going to be something to do so that when I do run a promote, by the time that I do decide to put something in front of them and I'm going to actually present them with an offer, it's not weird. It's not awkward. It doesn't seem out of place for them to click a link to learn more or to yeah. potentially buy. If that only happens once in a while, they're going to be like, well, that's weird. Right. And I don't feel guilty. I just put out an offer. Uh, was that, well, we're just, we're just starting to enroll for our next 21 day challenge. And off the back end of that um, five day freebie, you know, as it was starting to get like, I was emailing them an offer each day. And on the final day, I sent them off an, an offer at 8 AM and 11 AM and 5 PM. It was right. Like last day to get this deal. 12 hours left to get this deal, six hours left to get this deal. You would have asked me to do that two years ago. I would have been like, I would never do that. That's actually part of what we use in, in some of our like mass text campaigns or whether it's like a 20 for 20 or free week or something like that is the, the time to sign up gets smaller and the amount of um, spots left gets smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. It's getting closer. We've only got three spots. We've only got two spots. Just wanted to reach out to you, you know, because it works. Mm -hmm. it's, it's creating that limited time. Like you better get in quick. It's and it's crazy. The urgency. conversions. Yeah, the conversions at the end, right? As the as the deadline approaches, the start right. of the week, you're like, what the hell's going on? And then the end of the week, it's like, <laughs> bing, 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 bing. Right. Yeah. So. And because they even off the first message, that they might be like, oh, okay, and want to do it. But like not take any action and uh, yeah, I'll do that like later on or tomorrow or whatever. And then they get the other text message and something come up and yeah, only three spots. Okay, I've got to do this now or I'm not going to get in kind of thing. So psychologically it works. And I mean, I understand what you're saying because that's kind of the hurdle with marketing sometimes is like 
is this manipulative or like, are my intentions good here? Of course your intentions are good. You have a great product. You want to give people good results. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a hack, but it's for a good reason, you know? Mm -hmm. So well, I, I think people, people I think people are distracted more than ever. Oh, hey, you, you may you may think they're blowing you off, but they got an email and if they even open if the headline was even good enough to get them to open it and they're halfway through reading your email and then they got a, a three year old mommy, mommy, and then they mm -hmm. set their phone, you know, and then you you take it personal because you're like, well, they didn't want to take my offer and you don't even realize <laughs> what they're going through. Right. And right. so that that's again i understand what you said and i agree that to some level i think we can play that story in our minds i also think because they are so distracted that i think it's you're doing your due diligence in showing up and staying in front hey just just want to make sure hey just want to make sure just want to make just want to make sure you know yeah and if they don't and if they don't like it they can unsubscribe and be like yeah this dude's annoying so buzz off what? Right. okay <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a great way to look at it. Um, it is so true, man. Um, our attention spans are shrinking. We could get inundated with so much stuff now. So much. I mean, let's face it. You and, and I, you and I have been talking for forty-eight minutes. How many people have you have even made it this far? Oh, watching the <laughs> yeah, watching this. Who knows? <laughs> I'd love to believe it, but who knows? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it might be different because of our demographic as coaches and stuff and that like they need to get pieces of this information. Um, and the, I mean, the beauty of this kind of stuff is you can kind of just plug your earphones in and do something yeah. else. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, but man, you've given us a bunch of golden nuggets here. This is awesome, especially for anyone who wants to get into this space. Cause I know a lot of people do, especially now, like there's, it's still like kind of in its infancy, this whole mm. thing, you know? And I, I think the, the COVID thing was kind of the catalyst to, to open up people's perspectives of like, oh man, I could really, you know, this could be a, either a side hustle. And actually that's something I want to get into quickly too. Do you think that like, do you and your wife kind of split roles and do you think she's a huge part in, in you guys being a team and being able to run this thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as far as like what happens on the back end, we have very defined roles as to who's doing what and why to play to our strengths. But when we are in front of our clients, we are a team. We are 100% united. We are a team. Um, and I have really taken on the role of being her support and allowing her to come to the forefront. And, and why that is, because we knew now more than ever, to be relatable in a market where there's so much, you know, I don't know if I can cuss on here or not, but uh, no, you can't, we're all adults. <laughs> BS. There's just, <laughs> there's so much fake bullshit out there. Mm -hmm. And everybody is trying, when he's talked about manipulation, it's not persuasion, it becomes manipulation. And it just right. becomes something that isn't real to, as far as I'm, as far as a lot of stuff that I see out there. So, because we're working with busy moms, right? Like we both have a weight loss story. We're both parents, but she is, she is, and what, she raised three kids. Right. I mean, she's got, she, she knows the ins and outs. So, uh, you know, we, we're very much a team in that. And we, we play to each other's strengths and understand that, that, you know, to be, to be relatable is so incredibly important. So I kind of let her take the lead in some of those things. Um, because it's, I think it's important because these, these busy moms want to hear from her, right? She's, she's obviously a little bit now where I see a massive potential for growth is a lot of these busy moms are struggling in our culture because their husbands are unwilling to go on the journey with them. Their right. husbands, some are the husbands that are along with their wives, they're killing it. They're killing it. And their marriage is on fire. Their results are on fire. The moms in our culture that are struggling has a lot to do with their husbands and not that they're using their husbands as excuses, but they're a roadblock. They don't support it. They, you know, they don't want to help out prepping, you know, prepping food or going grocery shopping or participating in meal planning um, or being around, you know, helping out with just watching the kids while the wives work out and stuff like that. So I think for me in the next two years to leverage the position of me working exclusively with the men and making a bigger push 
to bring the dads and the husbands and the fathers on board will be something that will completely transition our business like right. 10, 10x. So yeah, we're, we're definitely united. We're definitely a team. We know how to leverage it and we know how to be incredibly authentic. And if you guys ever go out and look at what we do, the first thing you're going to be like, you're probably going to think is, are these guys serious? Because we, <laughs> we, build, we build humor into everything. So right. one of our taglines on our workouts is, uh, you know, we are fitness professionals, but we don't take ourselves that seriously. So okay. we are telling jokes. We are talking through the training. Like we're giving great coaching. We're, we are serious, but we also make it lighthearted. And we used to, you know, when we had a brick and mortar facility, we talked about making fitness fun. Um, I don't know if we ever really pulled that off. And when we did, it was through, it was through gimmicky stuff. Gotcha. And it was only ever so often. And now people are telling us, you know, you really make this an enjoyable experience. Like me and her are having banter back and forth while today, while we're doing single arm rows, you know, and we're still coaching the movement. And then people are commenting and joking around and they're just, you know, how the best workout plan is the one that they're going to do. So give them a reason to show up. Right. So, yeah, man. And it's interesting, the, the, the husband thing, Jeremy, the last guy I did the um, podcast with, um, and a and, and similar thing, he, most of the men he signs up for his challenges are the husbands that the wives bring in. And <laughs> like, and it could even, and he says sometimes it's even, you know, the wives are, are training and they're, they're going on about this new coach and the, the program. And the husbands actually get curious, like, who is this dude? Let me come in and see. And then they end up coming in yeah. and, and signing up. But it's because, and especially with like the online stuff, I know it's super hard to sign up men because we're stubborn. We're stubborn as shit. We don't need someone to tell us what to do. We can just figure it out ourselves, you know? So that yeah, yeah that I, sounds like a huge piece is is working with the husbands of the wives or at least their partners. Yeah. yeah. I think it just kind of comes back to knowing who you are, knowing what you what you stand for, what you stand against, right? Which is important. Like it's super important. You know, yep. if you stand for everything, you, you know, you kind of like stand for nothing in the same, right? So it's like knowing who you are, what you stand for, who you want to work with, and just being ultra, ultra, uh, where's the chihuahua? Alter, <laughs> ultra authentic, you know, and, and just like I said earlier, like if you aren't living what you're coaching, you're never going to be successful. I, I mean, you might be successful to a certain level. But you're probably going to have a lot of attrition. You're going to have a lot of revolving door syndrome. You're going to be frustrated. And that for us was like, we are 100% all in. There is nothing that we ask our people to do that we do not do. We are oh. actively participating in the live training with our client. I'm doing a dumbbell row. They're doing a dumbbell row. I'm coaching it while they're on the other end doing it themselves. Uh, you know, we post our meal plans in the group. We show pictures of everything we eat. Um, right. You're the we, living we are, embodiment of better body fitness. That's yeah. It's of your transparent. Transparency is is the key. I think if you want to grow in your brick and mortar, and especially if you want to grow online, you have to be willing to bear all. You have to be willing to get out in front of every single person that you're leading and be a leader. And that right. is, people don't do what you tell them. Just like your kids, they don't do what you tell them. They do what they see. They model. Right. And that's where I think if, if I could give one example. piece, yeah, one piece of advice, whatever you are going to choose and whatever you're going to do after you get off this Zoom call or whatever, you know, listen to this podcast, is are you gonna are you gonna live what you choose to lead? Right. That's a great way to to end this, I think, man. Because no 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 marketing strategy, no tactic, no workout, no nutrition plan is gonna make a hell of beans if you aren't willing to live what you what you choose to lead. That's it. <laughs> All right. I love it, Charles. I really appreciate you um, taking the time out to do this, man. Um, You're welcome. At the end of the day, we're really just trying to help everyone succeed. You know? I, I, I love that. It's a tough game, the fitness game. It really is. It's one of the hardest products to sell. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. And you know what? I, I think it's important that we have people step up in a capacity that they are willing to share. 
you know, right. like, so yeah. I'm happy to be on here. I'm, I'm happy to share. I hope somebody gets something out of this and I'm, I'm excited to hear other people's stories and learn from them. Um, because I think we're in an industry where uh, it's very ego driven. And I think a lot of people have a scarcity mindset and think somebody, cause I've been burned before, you know, I've been burned a couple of times and you start to feel like you can't share and you feel like you have to, you know, keep everything to yourself, but nobody gets better because of that. So I really appreciate what you're doing and bringing people in and 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 giving us an opportunity to share our stories and, and what's worked with us and how it's been you know an opportunity to work with you guys because like without that without that I just don't think we can really move this industry forward in a positive manner. So you know kudos to you guys because uh, oh, that's thank that's you a so big much, deal. Friend. Yeah, I, and especially in the age of Instagram and stuff, it's everything's really all about the aesthetics and. Um, the posturing and peacocking and so I agree man it's it's there's a huge shallow part of the industry and guys like you the authentic and my, pretty much everyone we work with is this, is the same way there's not too many shallow people that we work with so that's awesome. um, appreciate you man thanks so much Charles yeah. for doing this um, I'll, what I'll do everyone is we'll end up linking um, better bodies page so that they can have a look at the kind of content that you guys post and, and how you run things. And um, even your website, we'll link it to your website and, and we'll post this on the, on the Facebook group for the gym, gym owners. So awesome. again, Charles, thanks very much, brother. All right, Gavin, have a good one, buddy. You too, man. Talk soon. Right, Bye-bye.